please welcome Minyang with a warm round of applause. That was exactly what happened to me. 
Moving from Korea to Japan and entering international school truly popped my safe little bubble and, to be honest, humbled me. Firstly, moving from Korea, an extremely academically driven space, to an international school where talents, sports, arts, and everything are equally, equally recognized and praised made me realize that academics is not the only standard to measure one's ability. Coming here, I already met so many people with such talents that I have never thought of and would never be able to acquire the same way. For example, I know a friend who is just so talented in music that her music will be used for next year's honor band. Honor band. That is something that is beyond what I'm able to do. And because I came here, I believe that academics is not the only way to succeed. Second, I started to engage myself in inter-school clubs as I entered high school, where I met such diverse and versatile people. I'm a member of the debate team and the Model UN, which, which both clubs require heavy research, heavy research, public speaking, and quick thinking. All, all these skills are things that I struggle with. As I entered a larger environment out of my comfort zone, out of just our school community, I realized that while it takes me like days to write one, it takes me hours to write one convincing paragraph for my speech, it, for someone else it only takes 30 minutes to write the best lines. And this was a very shocking, shocking experience for me and it definitely popped my safe little bottle and my pride. And that is when I realized that I was not so special after all. I was just the main character in my world, but from others' perspective, I would just have a profile of an average high school student, who average high school student who is diligent and hardworking. And as I met these people, it, made, it encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone and and be involved with these people where I can learn from them. And that is how I, that is how I entered the fear zone, our next step. However, don't get me wrong, it was not a smooth transition. As I started to change my attitude to be more accepting, I began to spot my, spot my flaws and inabilities more. I would start to compare myself with the peers that, that are so talented than me. I would, I would self-doubt everything I've done, known, and, and believed till now. And that is how I, and I cannot count how many times I've thrown myself into my bed out of embarrassment and failure. And I cannot count how many, the amount of tears I've shed out regretting how I could have done better. However, these, fail, these, these failures are why the fear zone exists. We must see failure as a step stone to succeed, as a stepping stone to succeed. Now, how was I able to move into the learning zone, which is the next step? Well, nothing particularly changed from the fear zone because I continued to challenge myself more continuously. However, I changed my mindset into learning from my mistakes. Let's say even from the even from my experiences in Model UN and debate, I, <clears throat> even from these experiences, I used to self-deprecate myself for everything I've said because I lost confidence and I compared myself with all these talented people that I was surrounded with. However, I as I focused myself, I, as I channeled myself into building, building a mindset of learning from all these people instead of holding pride, I was able to let go of all my pride and all and the thought to be perfect and writing the most convincing past convincing speeches and discussions. And there I learned that when you learn how to yield your ideas and accept others as well, you essentially grow so much more. That is how I learn in these ways. And although these processes were not easy, as I've mentioned in the fear zone, as I've struggled a lot 
the learning zone has the change in mindset has changed the change in mindset stimulated and encouraged me that failures are incorporated in our in the way to success and that is how i can proudly say that i've reached the growth zone where i can find purpose set new goals live dreams and realize aspirations although i can't i'm still struggling to live dreams and find purpose i definitely set new goals now set new goals by being inspired by all my by the surroundings that i'm in touch with every day and i'm also able to and i'm still stubborn and i'm still stubborn and i'm still i still get carried about carried away with my own thoughts however i also learned that i'm able to hear others voices as well and not be too caught up in my own stubbornness if it was the old me i definitely wouldn't have been able to achieve this say when you analyze a poem by yourself you can get so far in analyzing it perfectly however when you work with a pair your ideas become twice more abundant as you as your inter, as you add up your interpretations together just like that don't don't try to replace your ideas with the, with others perspectives simply add on to your existing notions just like water and oil why can't they mix why can't they mix it's because they have different properties but that doesn't make either water or oil wrong in the same likewise do not think do not while you still hold on to your own ways do not reject your approaching ideas because who know who knows those ideas can actually prosper you as i wrap up my talk do you think you've seen a potential in yourself to jump into the growth zone It is never too early or too late to go to start your radical reframing. It took me my entire teenage years to figure out to figure out how to go through my radical reframing and I'm still in the process of it and I'm still on my journey. Some may go it early in their elementary years, some may go through it after high school or even when they start a new family. Regardless, regardless of the timing, a radical reframe will come to you and when it comes, do not Do not be afraid to grasp it. Thank you.